Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. We're, we're not number one. God is. We may not be the best, but our purpose is to lead you to the best. Jesus Christ. www.RapFestRadio.com. Old school to new school. Classics to exclusives. Gospel, hip hop, music, and videos. Live video interviews Monday nights at 8 p.m. Monday nights at 8 p.m. Watch. 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 Learn. Learn. Love. Love. Support. Support. Rap Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. 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 Was original in my music and very lyrical and a poet and live what I talk about. Mentally, emotionally, and physically, um, I'm sound. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has humbled me and, uh, you know, just gave me a peace at mind, you know what I mean? Knowledge and wisdom I now provide With my face down, step from out to hide Staring at the sun from the mountainside Limitless amounts, rap alkaline Weaponry cause of the jealousy Felonies breaking the fella's knees Living under fed and means Walk from the golden stream, looking for authority I wanna rap on the platform, hopefully The stench on the block ain't potpourri I wanna get it out so vocally I wanna hop on the ride, no token fee And why you gotta rap with the potency? Cause I don't really wanna care about a shoulder lean And I don't really wanna care about a rosary If you want to Intimidated with it while you close to me So, kick rocks, no pit stops Lyrical rap, we story the zip blocks Limited action, masochist, I'm a masochist I'm a masochist, I Be my guest, I'ma leave you Beat my flesh till it bleeds blue You believe in death? Me too I don't need my breath, you were breathing too With a mic on, what would Jesus do? Let's investigate, drawing in my thoughts And ferment the grapes, walk in the sermon Backs in pain from tossing and turning 1-800, call RK Tell him it will be okay he replies In the middle of iniquity I'm watching it through Stevie's eyes What you wanna be? A Christian rapper Bless me market Followers wanna call to the death for charging I touch notes Never left the margin Left the margin It was song right Married to work in the graveyard shift It's a hard fight Hard fight It was song right Married to work in the graveyard shift It's a hard fight Hard fight Move back, I'ma kick my story Put me in a box if a kid's got glory Hit him with a pop Never live it with a nigga Said it with a generous That kind of fits hip hop So don't stop Feeling like a brainiac In the midst of backlash Of a chain reaction How can I move with a shady faction Lazy guy Tracy McGrady action With a late reaction I'ma have a look And have a cook I have to cook the MacBook Never will I ride with the rude inventor Lost in the maze I cool dementia Cause I don't really rock with Like the bones Slice the loan Hypertones Bite the bone Microphones Diaper nose Cyber foe what you rock with? Christ alone You can see inside my brain, yo It'll be like an abstract theory, B Yo, it's on, right? Man, be the work in the graveyard shift It's a hard fight, hard fight Yo, it's on, right? Man, be the work in the graveyard shift It's a hard fight, hard fight Yo, welcome to Rap Fest Radio, rapfestradio.com. We are here live once again on a Monday night, the last Monday of June. Wow, July is already around the corner. 2014 is disappearing. Yes, but we're excited because we have with us today two of the DJs that are going to be helping us out at Rap Fest. We're going to meet them in a little bit. But let's get through all of our announcements first. Rap Fest 2014 is coming up August 9th in the Boogie Down Bronx at Vidalia Park. That's East 180th Street and Daly Avenue. Uh, featuring the Ministry of the Storytellers back together. Yo, we had a Storytellers rehearsal last week. I was like, <laughs> I love you guys, I love you guys. Uh, yeah, I'm excited and about that. It's been a long time, bro. Yeah, and, man. You know, to see the Lord's Ambassador and Eric E and Brother E and Jay Mulero uh, singing and, you know, Ellie in the band, it was a 
I was like, but like Bert, you want to do your song? And I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm chilling. I'm just listening, man. I'm enjoying this. You exactly. know, this is it was it was awesome. <clears throat> so storytellers will be live at Rap Fest with a live band. So you definitely want to come check that out. That's August 9th. Uh, also at Rap Fest will be the 412 Brothers coming out from Texas. I won't mention where they're coming from. Just listen to the names: Ali Rose, Angie Rose, Bridge B, Celius, Cipher, D Will, Day, He Sun Lee, Infinite Automatic, K Drama. Oh, Stadium Praise, K Drama, Red Dot, Architect, Righteous Knight, who we just saw, we just saw his video, uh, Swin the Example, The Saga, The Few, Tragic Hero, whatever, Young Joshua, and this year we have the Breakdance Crew Dynamic Rockers with Indio and his boys. They're gonna be dancing in and out throughout the, the course of the day. Uh, special guest DJ Breakbeat Lou, the legendary DJ Breakbeat Lou will be there. Um, He's a dope DJ. He only DJs with 45s, which is crazy. Uh, it's kind of like in honor of the combination of him and Eric Orr, we made our flyer to look like a 45. You know, it's a seven inch round. It's one of the best flyers I've round seen. Flyer. I, wow. wish I, I wish I had the, the actual physical flyers right now, but they should be coming in this week. But we only give them out like in the month of July. We don't give them out too early. But uh, get ready, it's gonna be a collector's item. People are gonna, pick, gonna be picking that one up. Nice. So yeah, we got DJ Breakbeat Lou. DJ Newman, DJ Transform, and these two brothers that we see right here, DJ Serve 45. Yes, sir. And Ed Ski. I love that. That's that's the name I love, man. That's throwback, old that's like school. A, that's like an old to the Ed to Ski. The old school, man. You gotta come with the with the Adidas with Adidas, the fat laces. Fat laces. <laughs> fat laces uh, the Adidas suit with the three yep, stripes. Track, He's kind of hot, but you can get it. Yo, man, um, let's do it this way, man. I know you spin text, but introduce yourselves individually, and then we'll start talking a little bit about different things. No problem. My name is Roly, a.k.a. DJ Sir 45 uh, representing the Elements Church, my pastor, Brother Ephraim Alisea, uh, also representing the spin text. Uh, my name is Eddie, uh, a.k.a. DJ Edsky, also coming from Elements Church. Um, been at Elements now, going on five years about five years wow yeah man time flies yeah time definitely flies five years wow. i can't believe brother east church has been around for so long already yeah. you know because I, I remember like it was yesterday it's like yo i think god's calling me to plant the church <laughs> yeah. all right power to you bro <laughs> yeah, yeah. yo but that's that's dope man uh congrats for that for you know just for the for being there for so many years man what what's dope about this is these guys are going to be helping us at Rap Fest this year. And if you've ever been to Rap Fest, you know our goal is nonstop music for eight hours. So actually, as soon as the, the, the sound crew says, system's on, let's start checking, let's the go. DJs are spinning and we're done. And we don't turn off till, till the cops tell us it's time to go. We use <coughs> like eight o'clock at night. So it's a, it's a tough it's a tough day, you know. DJ transformed it one year almost the whole thing by himself. Wow. Uh, yeah, and I, I thought he was gonna collapse, you know. <laughs> and my wife was feeling sorry for him. Like she would, come, you want food? Like, Just give me water. <laughs> uh, I remember DJ P Dog showed up like halfway through, and he kind of saw that Transform been there a long time, and he took over. That was when Manny had just gotten his operation, so he wasn't oh, he wasn't really up to DJing that year. Okay. And he was like escorting <laughs> Mickey Cruz around. He was, you know, so. Um, oh, that was the one on Arthur Avenue. No, the one here on. Um, at 174th Street, oh, and we had okay, to do it in indoors. <coughs> no, we had to do it indoors. We did it indoors that year. Uh, okay. Yeah. But uh, DJ Transform DJ the whole event. But it's I'm saying that because it is a, a long event for just one DJ. You yeah. know, so I, mean, I know you guys are going to be sharing the responsibility of DJing uh, in and out. So tell us a little bit of how you feel about it. Then we're going to get back to you know how did you get started DJing and all of that stuff. Well, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, this is. I've over the years I've I've showed up to certain rap fests. Uh, I rapped in a uh, rap fest '99, which was my biggest event. It was the first year I was a Christian rapper. It was awesome. The group was Unidad, and it, was, it had the MP3.com CD. Yes, right. Rap yes. fest '99. Still got it. I'm missing uh, disc one, but uh, well, I'm I'll find it. it. For, for Great, a fee. I, I need I need that. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it up on eBay later for you. All right. <laughs> Starting okay. bid eighty six dollars. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm 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 excited about this. Like I can't wait. It's almost like anxiety at this point. Like, all right, let's go. I'm ready. I was actually asking um, Manny DJ Newman yesterday. I'm like, so 
what are the little things you do to get you through the day, man? That's eight hours standing. I'm like, should I bring slippers? You know, what, what's going on? Coolers, chairs, what are we doing? So he's like, yeah, you know, bring coolers, some ice. Little fold-out chair, you can disappear, take a little rest. Right. So, but I'm, I'm extremely looking forward to this this year. Yeah, I think the adrenaline of everything that's going on makes you forget that you can rest. You know, I, I mean, I mean that's the way it is with me. I feel it the next day. Trust me, the next day I say I should have rested. You know, but uh, at Rap Fest, I'm up and nonstop. I'm here. I'm there. I'm like checking the cameras, checking this, the interviews, the photos, bang, bang. You know, or oh, who's visiting? Who's here? Police. Yeah. You know, talking to the cops, make sure we good. Community yeah. liaison, talking to the <laughs> pastors. And next thing you know, we're breaking down tents and we're coming home. Then we come here and we just vegetate. Right? <laughs> zombies for like a week we're like a full week of zombies but the adrenaline does help you go but definitely you want to bring a little chair or yeah I'm, I'm, I'm thinking little things here and there yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, with snacks and cool with snacks we do encourage people to donate waters for rap fest uh, bring as many as you want and buckets of ice we get from across the street from the store but you can bring as many waters as you want to donate to the artists and the DJs that would be ideal we, we, we're not going to turn it down we're not going to turn it down. So, Eddie, this is going to be your first time. This is my, yeah, this is almost, <clears throat> you could kind of say, almost like a dream come true, only because I remember the first rap fest um, uh, Brother E invited me to. Um, I believe it was the one in Arthur Avenue. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I heard about it, but I've never, I had never gone. That was with Nikki Cruz yeah, and the Truth. Yeah, yeah. That was so our that biggest was, rap fest ever, too. That was off the hook, and I just remember, like, Besides the storytellers, I had never seen any type of gospel hip hop artists. Really? And prior to even Rap Fest, I didn't. All I had was storyteller CDs. Mm. That was it. That was as far as um, any type of gospel hip hop. Um, and then before storytellers, my only other CD was one my father brought me. This guy uh, Stephen Wiley. Oh yeah, of course. So he's a pastor now, by the way. He's a pastor. Yeah. Wow. That's wow. Stephen Wiley. Right. I talk to him on Facebook every once in a while. Nice. That's cool. <laughs> So I remember that first rap fest, and I didn't even DJ at the time. Um, I had grown up. I've always, I always loved music. I always grew up um, wishing I could DJ. Could never really <laughs> afford the equipment. And then after I got older, I said, ah, you know. So um, just coming out to rap fest, and then linking up with E and these brothers over here, New Man, um, and in church was where actually I started DJing um, under New Man. New Man started. He just took me on his wing, started DJing. So. Um, I missed that the rap fest at uh, indoors. Yeah, the indoor one. That that's the that's the one I missed. I went last year. Um, so when New Man came to us and said, "Hey, what do you guys think about DJing?" At first, I thought he was joking. I was like, "Get out of here, man!" Like, <laughs> like I don't get you. Know, like I said, don't mess with me, yo. Don't mess with me. <laughs> you know, I, he's performed. He has a little bit more uh, experience than me. Like I said, I, you know, everything. I've probably been doing it now for about four and a half years or so. Um, I'm really just in the church. I've done like two or three um, weddings and stuff like that. So when he came to me with it, I thought he was playing and then he, he came serious the following Sunday and then put to Roly and Roly was like, oh, we, we in. And I was like, all right, you know, <laughs> actually, I guess. He actually <laughs> came up to me at last year's rap fest. And he Who, just, uh, uh, man, man uh, yeah, he was like, dude, next year, you ready? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. That's right. You know, so then you know when, but when he came with the final, bro, you guys are in. I'm like, oh man, did yeah, I really think about reality. this? <laughs> so, did I say yes already? Dude, Let me, I mean, Rap right Fest '99 was in a in a lot next to a church. Right in the little you know, parking lot. In too. a little parking lot, you know. Now we're out in a park. I mean, this this is this thing is blown up in 21 years. Even though, I think it was. No, well, I think the year after. Rap Fest 99 was a big crowd, and the year after was when we spilled out into the street. Into the street, yeah. We didn't have a permit for the street, but we spilled out into the street. Well, where was that at? Where was the, that? the same little lot uh, at Salem. The parking Actually, lot. no, it was 99. That and we, we had a crowd, the yeah, the crowd yeah. was into the street. And that's, that's when we were yeah, like, it was crazy. Whoa. That's when we were like, you know what, I think we might need to lock the street down. And that's when we started oh, yeah, just closing yeah, the street yeah. down. 2000 and on, we were just in the streets. And we realized that's where we belong, man. No, no more parking lot stuff. So now, it's interesting because even though you, you're DJing for the first time at Rap Fest, you've been DJing for a while, and you were part of a ministry that had DJ Nick Aponte. Yes, and, you Heaven know, the Bound Heaven Bound Sounds. Yes. So DJing is not necessarily new to you. No. I started when I was about 15. I mean, you know, I grew up broke, and every year my mother would be like, what do you want for Christmas? DJ equipment. 
wasn't I'm happening. Getting that. Something so, more realistic, son. Yeah, yeah. You know? So something from Hasbro. You know, it just. <laughs> yeah, How about Legos? It was just, you know, it was, it was just this passion for music that I had, and and um, a friend of mine from church had some equipment, so I started hanging out with him, and we used to do like all the church parties. Was that Nick? Like Sweet Sixteens? Nah, it was, it was oh, a guy okay, from else. my original okay. church. Um, and we started doing like everybody's Sweet Sixteens and stuff like that. So, you know, that's how it started. But then, you know, I met Nick and we started working um, Heaven Bound Sounds. We had the Hop, the House of Praise, which I remember is where I that. you at. Right, when well, you guys broke um, my mini disc player, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> the mini disc player. I still have one if you want. I have, give it to you. I have one. All I right. still have. But, um, yeah, working with him, it, it started off with a lot of gospel, a lot of worship. Right. Uh, we did a lot of church events, a lot of coffee houses. Um, then I stepped away for for a couple of years and just picked it back up about two and a half years ago. I was I was out on disability from my job. I was bored. You know, it, it kind of reached that point of uh, I want to do something fun with my life. I want to do something I enjoy. Yeah. Saved up some money, got some equipment, and actually started going to the Elements Church about two months later. So when I got to the Elements Church, it was like meeting up with New Man again. He was like, you got DJ equipment? I was like, dude, I just bought it like two months ago. Great, you're going to start DJing. And I'm like, uh, I haven't wow. unpacked it yet. Yeah, I'm like, wow, I don't even know how everything works yet. Come on, bro. But, I mean, it's been an amazing blessing. That's and, awesome. And I just, I, I love, you know, being behind the turntables and just being able to spread that, that music, that word, without me having to spread it my own word or talk in front of right, anybody right. that I can just stand behind the, the, the turntables and just, you know, spread a good message without even speaking. Right. And how did it feel for you? Like all of a sudden now you're DJ. Yeah, that was, like I said, it, you know, <laughs> just starting, um, you know, new man is the type of person that you ain't going to just, if, if you in any of his ministries, you're not going to sit there. You're not going to just hang out. So, um, started with just the sound and then he used to bring his little, his little uh, controller and, Again, he's like, yo, you want to DJ? Oh, I always wanted to. And from there, I started <laughs> in the church. We were in the small spot, and it's like, you know, like you said, it just, um, you know, we grew, and we wound up in a bigger spot, and then it kind of, sort of like what he was saying, like it hit me, like, it is a ministry. It is a way of ministry. Right. Especially when, when you're playing certain songs, um, and to have somebody come up to you and either, man, what's, what's that song? Because that song... You know, some of the lyrics in there really touched me, or can you make me copy this, or whatever you played. And so after hearing that a few times, you know, I, I really, I think it was there that I started really taking it serious, um, as far as the ministry wise. Um, but again, it's been a, it's been a, it's, it's, like I said, it's a dream come true in every aspect because it's something I grew up wanting to do. Nice. Now, <clears throat> here it is. I come to church, which growing up, you know, is the last place you think you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna pick up DJing. You know, right. in my head, I was like, all right, this is already past That's dream. Past. That you know, will never I'll, happen. I'll admire it from afar. <laughs> Even when I used to go to Salem, the coffee house, I remember, right. you know, I would always see whatever was was you know DJing the show was going stuff, on, right. but then I was always turning back, and New Man was in right. there New a, Man a lot was, of the yeah, time. Yeah, he used to DJ all the time. So, um, again, man, you know, here it is. I come to church, and um, this is where I learned. You know, and I've been doing it for about four years. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's good, man. That, that's really good. I remember the first time Manny told me, yo, Eddie's DJing at the church. What? <laughs> Get out of here. And he showed me a picture and he showed me a video. I was like, wow, that's dope. I mean, it's, it's great to know that every single one of us has a, a part. Yeah. in the body of Christ yeah. you know you don't have to go through like this whole regimen and, and boot camp of, yeah. of things and try to figure out what can you do and then at the end you just end up doing something you never wanted to do but they needed you to do whatever you know yeah. you when you can do what you have a passion for in yeah. ministry that's the most perfect combination you can have in, in Christ man uh, because you will you will grab that with with so much feeling like you don't want anything to happen to this yeah you know yeah, you don't want it to get messed up you don't want anybody to mess it up you want to make sure you do everything right which is which is the pressure that we put on ourselves right yeah, yeah we because do that on, a, on, a, on a, every sunday yeah every yeah, sunday you, we're well, like we don't want to mess up i mean it's bound to happen you're gonna, you're gonna make a mistake you know you know yeah. something's gonna go wrong and you're like oh my god no it can't happen yeah, yeah. but that's because you have a passion for it you know it's not like yeah whatever <laughs> you know oh nah this is, this he, he knows i always go to him like after the set is done and the service starts i'll go to the back and i'll look at him and he'll, you know he'll give me five like yo good job and i'll be like yeah he's real hard he's real hard on himself it was all right you know i messed up here you know but 
I, I'm learning to just move on. You know, I, I was watching some video the other day. I think it was Kid Capri, like in the middle of his set. He just like, the music went off. Like he just messed everything up. He didn't even look up. It was just like click, click, right back just into keep it. Going. Like, it just never sure, happened. I mean, why would you stop? You know, imagine yeah. worship songs, people just stop with See, if you look at certain videos <laughs> from the elements of me DJing, you might see me look up and make a face when I make a mistake. My wife oh, always really? tells me after the service, she's like, you messed up today, right? And I'm like, yeah, it's just one part. She was like, you always look up and you make this face. <laughs> All right, so now this is your, your challenge, people. Come to Rap Fest, have your cameras ready, get as close to the stage as possible, and every time he looks up making a face, you snap a oh. picture. Oh, man. <laughs> I have the a photo on Facebook. <laughs> DJ Sir 45 faces of Rap Fest. Faces. <laughs> the oh, many faces. Man. No, but... um. So who's this scratch? Do you guys do scratch DJing? Are you mixing? Like, what's what's your what's your specialty? Your forte? And your, you know, what do you want to do or don't do? Or, well, know? in my opinion, I, I see it like this: Manny, Manny's the veteran. He, okay. He's yeah. pretty much got everything on lock. He's got the scratching, the effects, transitioning. Like, he's he's pretty much solid. Between I, I've I've always been intrigued with the scratching, so I, I do try to incorporate scratching a lot in, in most of my sets because I, I'm I just love doing it but um I would say Eddie's more like playlist yeah, I like, I like mixing playlist blending mixing. yeah like he'll put a set together and you know it'll just have all this different genre of music and it just blended together and you're like this dude is a beast but that's know? good but that takes work though yeah that, that, that to me that's, that's, that's almost your homework. That's, that's like writing harder a song. than scratching I'm right, sorry exactly that's writing I don't you know, know, see, but, then, but then I see the opposite way because <laughs> he can scratch and I'm I'm, a, I'm like just you know I could keep up with the beat cause, you know because we do it along with the band the worship, right? the worship team yeah so you know I'm, I'm definitely always listening to him and new man um, but yeah the stuff he does like there's times that I'm, I'm back there doing something I'm like damn I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> gotta learn how to do that. that. Oh, we are. I mean, that's that's going on in all of our minds on Sundays. Sure. Like when Manny's DJing, like I, if I'm back next to him doing the sound, like we're just looking at him, like. Dude, yeah, that's from both like, really? Where did he get this from? You know. Yeah, that, but that's good, man. It, it, it's great to be able to use the different elements of of hip hop. No pun intended on the elements. <laughs> you know, the different elements of hip hop for worship in a way that it doesn't distract. You know, because you'll go to yeah. some churches or some events, and and the DJ's so out there, it's like, really, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah, scratching yeah. everything, throw it back, and slow it down, and mixing it doesn't make any sense, yeah. you know. But it's like, again, it's like writing a song, like picking the songs mm -hmm. to play during the yeah, during your set. I, I find in certain in my playlist, there's certain songs I won't play, maybe inside of the church. Okay. You know, uh, to me, there's different genres of Christian rap. Right. There's, there's, there's different, you know, you have some harder stuff, the street level stuff. You know, I tend not to play that only only because I don't want to steer someone the wrong way. So I, I kind of listen to the words a lot and, and I like to play a lot of uh, testimony stuff. Right. You know, a lot of, uh, of struggle, real life problems that people who are walking into the door, they understand and they can relate to that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of hard to explain when somebody comes up to you, that's Christian rap? Really? And I'm like, yeah, it is, you know, and, and, and it's just, I just, I, I kind of be mindful of, of what I play in my playlist when I'm in the church. So what do you guys do as far as keeping current with your music? Where do you guys get your music um, from? Are you uh, gonna... We rely on new man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, nah, I'm just, we do well, we do of... get a lot from him. Yeah, yeah, he's know. in the record pools and stuff Yeah, like he, that. we do get a lot from him, but you know, just, I remember when he was here, like he said, just the, 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 the digging. You know, YouTube, iTunes, um, Facebook. You know, I, I have a couple of the rappers on my Facebook, so through them I just seek out other music and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. We kind of all, like, sometimes, you know, like, I, I love to go into an album because sometimes there's, there's, there's songs in there that maybe you might have skipped over. The hidden gems, the right? The hidden gems. Mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah. love looking for mm -hmm. the hidden gems. So we all kind of, we'll all share the, you know, even, even on Sunday sometimes we'll, We'll kind of hold it in our pocket, and then we'll shoot it out there. And yeah. then one of us will come up to you know whoever's DJing, like yo, you know you, you know you. Uh, you gotta give me that. You're gonna give me that. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, where you get that from? Yeah. Why don't oh, I no, have we, that? We, walk, we all walk around with flash drives on us, so it's like, uh, yeah, let me get that. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a good thing to do. I mean, you you definitely want to make sure you all have the right material, especially if you're all DJing at the same location yeah. at different times. Yeah. 
you know, you don't want that one day it sounds good and then the next day it's like, yo, he, he plays some whack songs out yeah, there. Yeah. You know, you want to always make sure that you have stuff current. So have you spoken with Nick Aponte lately, like regarding your, um, your thing and what you're doing now? Not really. I, I, I used to see him a lot. We work across the street from each other and uh, there was a Chase Bank in my building. So we used to see each other a lot. Um, he actually hit me up on Instagram the other day, so I, I've been meaning to get in contact with him. I really, you know, would really like to sit down with him and, you know. I think he's, he'll be at Rap Fest this year. Nice. So. Well, Nick Aponte has been at Rap Fest every year for the past, I want to say, 10, 11 years, at least in spirit, because most of the tents we use are his. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> most there of the tents go. we use are his, so we, you know, I... He'll, uh, we'll use them after Rap Fest, give them back, or we store them here, or whatever. Sometimes he comes here, yo, could I borrow my tents? I'm like, dude, they're your tents, you know, they're not mine. So, um, and I was. It's, it's always great to see him, and it's been a blessing to know that he's still doing what he's doing. Oh, absolutely. After so many years. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. I was invited to MC a wedding once. And, you know, I was always skeptical, like, oh, who's going to DJ this wedding? And they want me to MC. You know, sometimes DJs don't want that, um, yeah. you know, or they're going to play some corny music. I don't want to introduce nothing. And and so I asked the bride, by any chance, do you know what the name of the DJ is? Oh, his name is Nicholas Aponte. I said, okay, I'll be there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Done deal. We had so much fun. We had so much fun. I think I ripped them off. I let Nick do everything. I just hanging out. I was like... Yeah, you know, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Hashtag facts. <laughs> no, but uh, it, it's good to have, you know, those connections from the past and, oh, and yeah. see them as they grow as well. You know, since Rap Fest 99 to this year, a lot of those ministries that were in Rap Fest 99 are still doing things. Exactly. You know, and we, I, I always try to go through the list of who's doing what, you know, and see where they're at. Some of them have probably gone astray a little bit, but they're still kind of connected. You know, I try to, we try to stay in touch with everybody all the time, which is so hard to do. So many people after so many years of doing this, you know. Uh, but it's a blessing to see, you know, guys like yourself coming back in and, and yeah. digging in and, and doing this and and it's not a matter of yo to show you how this is how it's done it's just like let's just do this yeah it's it's, it's the last two and a half years have just been amazing I, i'm like it's like starting new reborn christian that's what it is like i'm just starting new i'm learning again i'm i'm, I'm learning so much more about the lord and, and and the bible like we've been going we've had these things called io groups and it's like a Whatever day you're available during the week, you get together and you have a Bible study. Nice. And the way it works is 20 minutes reading, 20 minutes writing, 20 minutes talking. It's a straight hour, that's it. And, I mean, I've read the Bible over and over. I mean, I've, I've been with the Lord since I was a kid. So I've read the Bible over and over and over again. But these last two years, it's been learning the Bible. Learning who Jesus nice. was, learning who God was. And it's just, it's, like I said, it's just been amazing to be part of all of it again. And I'm just so glad you're still doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm glad Nick is still doing it. I, I hung out with Danny not too long ago. Yeah, I see him all the time. Yeah, he lives like two blocks away from me. Well, so, yeah, he, he comes to the church to the men's breakfast all the yeah, time. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's just I always try to great. kick him out. I always try to kick him out. <laughs> I love bothering Danny, but he's so easy to bother. Yeah, me oh. too. Oh, man, <laughs> that, that dude, man, I think I've raised his blood pressure. <laughs> That's what we're called to do, raise people's exactly. blood pressure and give them good music. Y'all want to just play this video to so, uh, one of our main sponsors, Grateful Apparel. By the way, shout out to our sponsors, Grateful Apparel, gratefulapparel.com. Check out their website. They have a whole new collection of stuff out there. It's amazing stuff. Um, <clears throat> this great GratefulApparel.com. Also, shout out to HolyCulture.net for hosting our podcast nonstop. And Pure Stream TV, allowing us to stream this video broadcast right now with no commercials. Uh, BXRecords.com. Shout out to all the people over at BXRecords.com. They've been checking us out every Saturday and Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Tuning in. If you have any questions, hit us up on email, RapFestInc at gmail.com. Or hit us up on Twitter at RapFestRadio. Or call us 805-727-3378. That's 805 Rap Fest. Uh, we'll love to, you know, listen, listen what you have to say. Uh, who else? Uh, Nyack College sponsoring Rap Fest this year, so we're excited nice. about that. Uh, Eric E and his ministry, Adorando Con Flow, is also down with that. Um, Elements, of course, is getting in on it as well, so we're really excited. Uh, Jam the Hype, shout out to Jam the Hype as well for getting involved with us. Uh, uh, Sphere of Hip Hop. Sphere of Hip Hop as well. Uh, they helped us put out the press release that was very 
they did a great job, man, and and put and just blasting it out there and, and making sure all the media outlets got the press release. So that's dope. Uh, God belongs in my city as well, which leads me to the next announcement. August second, the Saturday before Rap Fest, we'll be having a prayer walk in the neighborhood where Rap Fest is being held. We'll meet at the park at 12 noon, and we'll walk about maybe two, two, three miles around the neighborhood and just praying with people, praying in the neighborhood randomly just letting people know that you know we're here because we want to bless you you know we don't just want to bring you a concert next week and show up and like that's a free concert and you bounce but yeah. we we want to see change you know we're, we're praying for that as well pastor jose cruz our, our one of our main sponsor churches for rap fest this year new birth church new york they're having a prayer every tuesday night at 6.30 at Vidalia Park, one hour, from 6.30 to 7.30, every Tuesday night, starting tomorrow, uh, I think it's tomorrow, no, sorry, the first the first uh, Tuesday of July, what's that, the 6th or whatever it is, all the way to the, the Tuesday before Rap Fest. So every Tuesday, uh, starting the first Tuesday of July, straight out to the end, uh, to the beginning of August, right before Rap Fest, They'll be at Vidalia Park for a one-hour prayer. So I encourage anybody that's involved in Rap Fest, rapping in Rap Fest, has been to Rap Fest, wants to go to Rap Fest, wants to pray for Rap Fest, wants to know more about Rap Fest, to come out and join us for these prayers. It's going to be some incredible. Tomorrow's oh, so it is tomorrow. I'm I'm lost. I don't even know what day it is anymore. I thought I saw July first. So it is July first. I'm thinking that I'm thinking next week. I, f I forget. I don't know my days. It happens, you know. So starting July first, that's tomorrow is the first prayer night, and that's probably what who's texting me right now. Like this is wrong date. That's okay. July first, all the way to August. I think it's fifth. I want to say that's uh, first Tuesday in August. There'll be prayer at the park. So you definitely want to make sure you go down there and check it out. It's going to be incredible incredible time of prayer and August 2nd is the main prayer walk we want you to be there August 9th is rap fest but right now I want to play this quick video from one of our sponsors grateful apparel gratefulapparel.com we'll be right back with more and see if Eddie gives us a little hint of his playlist for this oh, Sunday snap. yeah I remember this one time I walked into my cousin's first home and I was young the feeling I had was like I could never ever achieve buying a house Looking back, it's crazy because I didn't know anything about whether I could buy a home or I couldn't buy a home back then. It was just something that was instilled in me that made me feel like I wasn't worthy to buy a home or buy anything. I thought I wasn't worthy of achieving anything. I thought my life would be a struggle. I didn't think I could ever achieve anything but what I had. You know, the street, you know, my friends across the street and 93rd Street and Northern Boulevard was my life. I'm grateful for my experiences because now I see things differently and I want to reach out to those guys who might feel like that today still. Because there's grown men who might feel they're not worthy still. My name's Raymond and I am grateful. Grateful Apparel is geared toward helping those in need. We want to thank you for partnering with us in keeping the 360 house doors open. Your purchase goes a long way, and we are grateful. Trust God, clean house, help others. Grateful. Yo, so that's Grateful Apparel, gratefulapparel.com. Make sure you check them out. Uh, like he said in the video, a portion of all proceeds goes towards the 360 house where they're helping to keep people off the streets, off of drugs, and you know rehab them. I've, I got to visit those houses a couple, uh, like two years ago. Amazing, the work that they're doing over there is like, wow. it's real. It's real, so you definitely want to check it out. So yeah, before the break, I was trying to you know see if we could pry into Eddie's playlist and see you know I'm, I'm hearing he's the playlist king. So <laughs> you know, so what what would be your let's give me an example of one of your most recent playlists for a Sunday morning? Uh, I'll probably say a little bit of Social Club. Cause that's that's kind of what's um, what's popping right now. Um, I like to put some old school stuff, so I may have. Um, Storytellers in there. All right. Um, I throw some, you know, maybe even Brother Zing, some Brother E stuff, which 
kind of uh, anytime I play his stuff, he's always like um, <laughs> definitely some Jake Bassa. Always throw some you know some type of R and B in there. Um, a little bit of reggae, Benja, a kind of nice. Benja fan. Even though I don't know, as of late, some of his stuffs different. Yeah, a little, a little different. Little different right? Right. Some of the old school stuff. Um, uh, SO, I'm an SO fan. Oh, okay. So you know, that's just kind of like. What about you? What's what? What does your playlist consist of? Everything hard. <laughs> um, Social Club definitely. I think we're just all fans yeah, of Social yeah, yeah. Club right now. Um, I think I played Freestyle Fan once. I would I would like to get him in there more, but um. It's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. It ain't your typical Sunday morning music. Yeah, that's for not, sure. It's not. It's not, not awesome. in the morning. Awesome. Yeah. Listen, I've, I've come in them in there with with them on the playlist, and one Sunday, him and Manny were having a convo about their stuff, and I didn't really hear the song straight through. I was like, yeah, okay, gotta move that one out of there. Yeah, they're amazing. I mean, <clears throat> I would put them on a Sunday morning just for like a wake up shock value. Oh. Like, dude, it, people stuff. be like, hold on, we at church? This, this is <laughs> this is the funny thing about them. They're awesome guys who love the Lord. Yep. No and no problem. the funny thing is, is that they came to our church a couple of yeah. months ago and they walked in and they were like, new man, because he, he does a lot of work with them. So he's like, you DJ here in church? And he's like, yeah, bro, that's what we do here. He's like, what do you play? And I'm looking at them like, are you guys serious? They, they don't do that in their church. Yeah, so he, he, you know, Quest breaks it down to me. He goes, well, you know, I go to a different, uh, more of an old-fashioned type church, you know, with a lot of, you know, older people and stuff like that. And I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. So it, it was pretty funny to get that reaction from them. But um, some of the other stuff I would play, let's, you know, I like Andy, of course, Andy Mineo. Um, I like Lecrae. Um... Reggae. I got to uh, do an event with, I don't know if you know them, Dwayne Fire and Carl I. Not really. They're, um, they're up and coming artists from Crossover Movement, I think okay. they're called. Um, yeah, they, they, their performances, their stage princess is crazy. It's like, really? you're like in Carnival with them. Yeah, really? it's crazy. Um, I got to see Ryan Mark, another reggae artist. Um, there's so many. I'm, I'm, I don't have favorites, I have favorite songs. So I, I will still go back to the first folder that New Man gave me and I will play those songs again to see if I missed anything. Right. So it, it's not so much, my playlist is probably all over the place. You know, and I, and I look at other people's playlists when they post it on Instagram and I'm like, wow, you're playing four Andy Mineo songs in one playlist? I'm like, I'm just not like that. I like the variety, I like to, you know, Get the different artists out there. So, I'm, I'm, I'm. What's your go-to track? Like for for different reasons. Let's say, Alter Call, go-to track. Alter Call is instrumentals. Yeah. What so is it? We'll, we'll, it's, uh, is it a secret? No, it's not. I just can't remember his <laughs> I know, name. I right know. Now. I use one of uh, um, Ferrer stuff. Frequency oh, production. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Any, any. You know, a lot of their. Um, yeah, it's kind of laid back. They got some, yeah, moves, yeah, moves, yeah, music. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a few. I think um, some of the beats from Mars and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So he's those tracks. And how about like a hype? Like if the moment is hype, and they just you just um, you got a chance to play one more song that you know is gonna like. Cipher by We Live as Kings. Oh, nice. I that's my go-to instrumental. Nice. That's my go-to like for offering. You know, right before we start the service, when the announcements are on, that's like. For some reason, that beat just always there, and and I probably play that in any event that I'm at. Sweet. I'll play that song, um, "War" by uh, Lecrae. Mm -hmm. That was like I think the first song that I was like, "Oh, I'm DJing." <laughs> <laughs> they, they make this now. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm in this. This is me. This can't is my stop, style. Can't stop me now. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I played. I probably played out "War." Now he got the new one, "The Fever." Right. On the church clothes. Uh -huh. that, that's my new one. So. Or at yeah. least you got a new one. Yeah, I got a new one. I played War Out, but you know, it still might come up once in a while. That's cool. So listen, man, we got we have 20 minutes left. So what I want to do is let's 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 talk a little bit more about yourselves now. Like, why God? Like, you know, why? Why you you have these talents? You have the equipment. You know the power of the music. Why God? Like, you know, why do you choose God? 
I mean, for me, <clears throat> see, I, I grew up in church. So I'm a baby. My parents, um, my parents were part of John 3.16. Then I grew up in Love Gospel until about the age of eight, and then Crossroads. Um, I broke out. Once I turned about 18, 19, my mom, you know, she wasn't going to force me no more. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> um, so I was away from the Lord for about a good 10 years. And um, I just remember my mother, my mother never stopped going to church. She was always at Crossroads. So, uh, like I told you earlier, um, you know, I, the only thing I knew hip hop was storytellers only because my mom's would buy the CDs. All I think right. I went to like two shows at, at the time right. that I was away from the Lord. But my mom, anytime, anytime I, a CD came out, she was like, here, here. So, um, you know, through those CDs, um, you know, those songs really, there was one by, I'm trying to think of the, the lyrics, it was Eric E. I can't think of the song right now. I, it'll, it'll come to me. But those songs ministered to me. Like, I remember even coming home from from work, and, and so through those songs, I kind of was recalling my youth. And I remember being, you know, in church, even though I didn't understand it at the time, but I still remember being happier. I remember even in, in, in the worst of things, um, even in high school, stuff like that, I just remember that no matter what, I always had that hope. Mm. You know, yeah, again, I didn't understand salvation and God, I, I, I grew up in it. I understood, you know, playing church and stuff like that. I understood the, the base, you know, basics of it, but I didn't fully grasp it. So, um, uh, so I got into a big car accident, uh, you know, 10 years out of, after uh, leaving, leaving church. And so um, after my car accident, I kind of lost everything that I was holding on to, everything that I thought was important. I lost it all, from mm. cars to apartment, everything, everything. So again, coming back to church, um, I kind of found that happiness again, that joy. Mm. Mm. And in those 10 years, I remember even going clubbing, and I would literally be in the club, and I would be like praying to God, like, why well, can't open up? Why well, can't have fun like everybody else? Um, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, kind of funny. Like, you're in a club where you're praying, and God, I'm praying. I want to have fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like my son. Look yeah. where you're standing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, came back to Crossroads for a little while, and um, that's kind of where I linked up with E. Um, uh, it was actually through my wife, who was my fiance at the time. You know, we, we were all in the cell groups, mm -hmm. um, and we all kind of just, you know, built a relationship like that. And then, um, Long story short, he first started a, a church. I was in security ministry there. But again, going to rap fest, E, you know, you hang with E, everything's Christ. Right. Amen. You know, you Amen. could be you could be watching the craziest movie and he'll still find a way to mix in Christ. So mm -hmm. having brothers like that in my life that no matter what it was, we you know, where we were, always left that, you know, somehow from hanging out at night or whatever, there was always a nugget. Something was there. Mm -hmm that I would still go home or the next day or a week later we call and be like, damn, you know, that makes sense. So, you know, he starts Elements, I come into Elements, I bring my family along, um, and, you know, I got three kids. Um, and so just seeing them involved, and, and that's one thing about a small, smaller church like Elements, we, we do it all there. We're everything. We're the janitor, the DJ, whatever it is, we're there. So we're kind of a, a tight-knit community, um, but at the same time, everybody's, um, we're really open. Like, you come in, I, I've been to big churches. I won't name no names because, you know, I don't want to, but I've been to really nice big churches where I wouldn't even get a look. You know, nobody would even acknowledge. It's almost like, what are you doing in my building? Wow. So, yeah. you know, that, that everything, just seeing my family in church, um, you know, uh, get, get having that joy again in my life. And again, that doesn't mean that, they, you know, there's no problems, you know, we yeah, go through course, the same right. stuff. So for me, it's more of a question of why not God? Mm. You know, awesome. I've, I've, I've been, I've, I've seen the, 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 the other opposite, side, the right. other side. And, and I knew that even though on the outside, I probably looked better, you know, as far as financially and, and not that I was rich or anything, but just the overall look was like, oh yeah, you know, that guy's probably happy, you know, I had a nice, a nice uh, apartment, everything, car, the whole nine, but for me, like I said, it's, it's more like, why not God? I mean, this is the place where 
again, in my dream of DJing, I've always loved music. And here it is in church. You know, like you said, this is kind of like, you know, it's, it's kind of where you find your joy, where you realize, here it is, you're helping somebody, um, you know, you're ministering through music. So, again, it, it's, I, I would say, like, out of my whole life, this is the time where, you know, even though it's work, you know that, you know, we, we work. On Sundays, it's, it's work. And I could be dead tired, but that joy kind of, like, just, just beats it all. You know, I don't, I don't, I, I could come out of Sunday. And my wife even asked me to tell me, like, dang, like, I thought you was dead. And I don't, I don't know where I get the energy. You know, it's God. But, um, <laughs> again, my, I, I've been to the other side and I've tasted that. And I, I can't, I, you can't compare it. You can't Amen. compare it. So, Amen. that's just, that's just good. Me. Good stuff. Same story. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, almost, almost, you know, I, I would say it's probably almost the same. I, I've been in the Catholic Church from a baby, went to Catholic school all the way up to seventh grade. Um, I used to stay at my cousin's house on the weekend sometimes, and my grandmother lived down the block. So she would uh, pick them up Sunday mornings. Let's go to church. And, you know, the face is like, oh. <laughs> That sermon is like two hours. They're talking Spanish. We don't understand. Like, why? And, you know, my mom was just like, get out the house. Go to church. So, but what attracted me to that church was the fact of, as I kept going, they remembered my name. You know, it was like, oh, that's Maria's grandson. And, you know, it was almost like family. And then they took us up to a retreat, a youth retreat. And, like, I had never been out the city. So that was awesome. Came back, like, Want to join the youth choir? Join the youth nice. choir. That's where I learned sound equipment. You know, the only thing was was that me growing up, I was. I remember everybody used to say it was living lukewarm, like playing both sides of the fence. I was there every Sunday, but I was literally just getting home Saturday, Sunday morning at five in the morning from the club. Fifteen years old, you know, getting up, getting dressed, and going to church and being in like Bible class, passed out. You know, like, the woman who was teaching us, she couldn't stand me. She was like, <laughs> don't let him come to my class no more. And it was just like, you know, as I got older, you know, the love just grew, grew. And, you know, I love the church. And I ended up stepping away for about 12 years. Wow. And, um, you know, just as a teenager, what was in the world, I was young. I was living a, a, a young adult life, going to the clubs and drinking and... <laughs> You know, I'm 15, 16 years old living this life. And when you're that young, like, to me, it was, like, awesome. And then it was like, okay, I got to go to church the next day. You know, I got to be there. I got choir practice, you know. But getting older and then being away from, I wasn't away from God. I was away from the church. And, uh, you know, I, I met my wife, and we tried. We constantly tried to go back to church. And, you know, I mean, I've walked out in the middle of services from some of the things that I, I've witnessed in, in the church. And it kind of like made me, you know, I would go see one church, be like, no, nah, that wasn't it. And not go to another church for like months, you know. And then we ended up in Salem right before um, you guys left. We were there for a little while. And then, you know, again, just walked away and. I remember the first, the spot on East Tremont with the elements, I had started doing graphics for t-shirts. We were moving to Pennsylvania and um, I wanted to do like uh, extreme sportswear, like graphics t-shirt thing. And I was looking for a place to print t-shirts and I remember driving up East Tremont one day and seeing this graffiti and I'm like, that looks like something. I wonder what's going on in there. And I mean, I drove by this thing so many times and never knew what it was. And over the years that I stepped away from church, I would always like type in Bird Boca Chica. <laughs> he from Alisea and you know, see if there was any videos, what you know, what y'all were doing. And one day I found a, a video, actually Nick. Nick posted a video of Ephraim. And um like I was just like amazed, like, babe, look, it's Ephraim. And I saw the video and I saw the church and I was like, Babe, we're going to church on Sunday. I'm like, God just God just stopped everything. I said, do you remember that place on East Tremont with the graffiti that I was like, what is that? They do something there. And she was like, yeah, I said, that's Ephraim's church, it's the elements. So that week I was on disability. I had some issues at work, I had a little breakdown. 
So I was, took some time off to get, you know, mentally straight. During that week, I went over to the church to see if he was there. He ended up being there. We spoke for two hours, and, you know, I've just been there ever since. Awesome. Like, the first week I went, he I remember he introduced me to Eddie, <coughs> and, and I had saw a new man because he just came back from the heart surgery, and Ephraim just puts it out there. Roly does sound. Next week I was doing sound. Like, <laughs> it, it hasn't stopped since I walked into this church. It's like sound, DJ, everything else we need. And, you know, I just, I look at it like I stepped away from the Lord for 12 years. I stepped away from ministry. I stepped away from church. This is how I give back. Do whatever I can do for the elements. Whatever I can do to make the elements grow because that's my home. And, you know, I remember when my wife started coming, she came a little after me. When she started coming, it was just one Sunday we were, we were, you know, going through something and we sat in the back. And when I left, when we left that day, I just looked at her and I said, we're in a church. I said, this is church. I said, this is not a gimmick. This is not what some people may say, the hip hop thing or, you know, just a gathering of people. It, this was church. Like, we were learning about God. Brother, he was not only a friend of mine, a brother of mine, he was my pastor and, and he was teaching me. And just from then on, we, we just built relationships and you know, now it's like just one big family. So it, I was extremely happy and I felt like, you know, God allowed me to see what was going on in other churches and just prepared me for this. Because like I said, once I walked through those doors, that was it. There wasn't like, you can't disappear again. Cause he even asked me like when I walked, he was like, so are you staying this time bro? Cause you know, you come every couple of years in and out. You show up at a rap fest, you know, you text me somewhere. Disappear. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm home. This is it for me. You know, I've seen things, I've experienced things, I'm going through things, and now I want something back that I used to have. And you know, slowly but surely, it's, it's just all coming back to me, and it's, it's just been great. Like, I've been able to build up relationships, again, you, with new man, with, with brother E, I, I, you know, meeting Eddie, and then Josh, and all the guys from the church, like, we literally love to hang out. You yes. know, like, e, E's already said it. When we get a building, one of y'all getting keys, because y'all yeah, don't know how to go home, y'all want to hang out here, and <laughs> no, I got to go home. So, you know, it's, it's been, it's, God is good. It's just been amazing. Yes. Just, uh, just piggybacking on what you had said before, where sometimes we're, we're in this place spiritually that sometimes it's not even the church that's being the obstacles. It's sometimes we have to come to realization that there's something within us that's wrong. Oh, yeah. And we could be at a church that's a Bible preaching church and that's perfect, but because there's something spiritually not right, we're gonna reject everything or we're blocking the Holy Spirit from ministering to us. Yeah. And sometimes, and I'm not saying this is what's was your case, sometimes we find ourselves in that wandering stage where we're going from church to church to church until we come to the realization that, wait a second, maybe it wasn't a particular church. It was me. There's something yeah. wrong with me. There, there were many instances like that. Yeah, and, and sometimes it is the church. Sometimes you walk yeah. into a church and you get this vibe like, I don't belong. Yeah. You know, who I am doesn't belong with this church. And that's why we got to thank God that there are so many different yeah. churches that exactly. cater to everybody's yeah. personality, everybody's need. Exactly. And that that's so important. Just because a church is perfect for me doesn't mean it's perfect yeah. for you. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have to not be so critical of that yeah. because that's why in the body of Christ, there's so many different churches that we could go to. And, you know, and that's that, that feeling of belonging it's so important within mm -hmm. the church. You know, there's so many churches you go to and you have to take 23 new member classes before you do anything in the mm -hmm. church and you never really get that I belong feeling. Exactly. You know, and it's so great, I think, as um, pastors and, and even leaders of the church to find this niche that this person likes. You're, you're a plumber? Okay, great, look, there's another plumber here, and, and connect, and make all these connections with each other in the body of Christ. Because once you feel you belong to some place, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna come back. Exactly. You know, and, and that's so important for, for leadership and pastors to, to keep in mind, you know, th these are not just people that are just coming. There's, there's an interest, there's, there's, a, there's a need, there, there's something yeah. that this person has a passion for. Mm -hmm. So find a passion, connect it with someone else, or connect it with a ministry, and if you don't have one, you know what? 
if creating a ministry is just what's going to cause this person to completely commit, I don't care, create a knitting committee if this person's exactly. yeah, passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. continue that feeling of belonging within the body of Christ. And, you know, it's amazing because then you have all these people working towards one goal in the church, feeling that they belong. And you know what? They're going to push your vision that you've built for your church because they feel like they belong. It's like a sense of ownership. Like yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, absolutely. I, I definitely take it like that. Like, elements, like, I'm elements gang. I <laughs> fight for my church, but, you know. Not yet, but, son. <laughs> not yet. God, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we did go to the gun range last week. I know, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's that family vibe, and, you know, I give a lot of credit to, to Brother E because he does push that car. Mm -hmm. He pushes, you know, like these IO groups. This is my second group and, and this is our second session. And what happens is, is that he doesn't want us, like I was with Manny and Neldy in the first group and now I was with Erica and her mother. So like we, we try to evolve around so we get to hang out with different people and we get to build relationships. And you know, like I said, after church, you know, we don't want to go home like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. So we, we've been able to build that bond. And, and it's been something like exactly what you said, like Brother E pays attention to that stuff. And he's like, you know what? Yes, we're gonna learn about God. Yes, you know, I'm, I'm here to spread the word. I'm here to listen to you. But like he, he always says, you know, I'm your pastor and, and I'm here, but you don't always have to come to me. You know, build relationships with other people. Right. So. You know, it's not, I'm the pastor, I'm here as, as your leader, and you know, I'm here for you. Whenever you need me, I will never turn you away. But also, don't forget, build relationships with other people because, you know, and it's something that's obviously worked. Like, my wife has become really good friends with New Man's wife. You know, they, they experience stuff together. They, you know, during the week, they talk on the phone, and it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And it's exactly what you said, it's, it's those relationships being built, and you're not leaving nobody out in the mm -hmm. trenches. You know, everybody comes into right. the elements. Brother, he's always like, did you say hello to that person? Make yeah. sure you say hello to people. You know, don't don't just let somebody walk in and sit there. You know, go right. speak to them. Try to make them feel comfortable. The same way, you know, you felt comfortable. So that's the worst. The worst feeling to have is to walk into a church and sit there and nobody acknowledges nobody at that. all. Yeah. That happened to Brother E and I. We went. We were invited to go rap somewhere. We showed up early for sound check. We went through the doors. There was like 16, 17 people in the building. We're sitting down in the back. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 wow. minutes, 20 minutes, half hour. And all of a sudden somebody says, oh, such and such person just got here. You know, one of the, I guess the person that invited us. Okay. And she walks in, they recognize us and said, oh, Bert, Brother E, you're here already. That's cool. Let's, let's, let's start to sound check. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to greet us. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, really? That was a yeah, good it's, opportunity it's, it's to leave, rough. but we did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're it's, done, we're done, that's good. Yeah, it's, yeah, rough, it's rough, man. But definitely a, a sense of belonging, that's what the church should do. And naturally, you have to tap into the talents, ministries, uh, expertise of each person that walks in through that door. Because many exactly. times a church could be lacking in something and the answer's sitting three rows back. Yeah. You know? It's one of the things Alice and I try to do a lot. We run the young adults group at the church, and I'm always like, what are you studying? What are you doing? You're a nurse, and she's a nurse. Go, bam, go, connect. Next, what do you do? This, this, nice, that. Nice. Connect. Or you're a plumber, you're a DJ. We just got a new guy doing sound for us. Now he's a DJ. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm a DJ. Do sound. Okay, fine. You know, you know how to use this board. <laughs> you know, uh, we need help great. here. Yeah. You know, I'll, he, I do lights. Oh, fine, you do lights. My girlfriend says she sings for our worship team. You know, let's go. Let's let's do this. Exactly. You know, I mean, we, we want to build a body. You know, we want to build a body. You can't do it with just two or three people. But it's sort of like Alice said, like, you know, some churches, um, they'll make you go through, like, classes and all the stuff before you even get to taste, uh, you know, uh, serving. And I don't know, like, you know, even sitting here just hearing all of this, I don't know, maybe maybe that's not, maybe it's better to do the opposite. Test you know, drive. Where, like you said, yeah, it doesn't always drive. have to be yeah. this whole six months to a year um, uh, a waiting period. Just yeah. throw them in because it, it, it's. I mean, discipleship is great. I think every everybody of needs course, yeah. this discipleship, yeah, sure. this mentoring thing. 
So what happens in the interim of that? Do you just sit and you don't become part of the church? Yeah. Do you just become a spectator? Do you are an outsider because you haven't taken these classes? So you right. can never fit into this group that's tight-knit, that's the yeah. ministry, right. because you haven't taken these classes. So I think I think it has to go together. together. You yeah. know, as right. a community, yeah. we're mentoring you, we're discipling yeah. you, we're pouring into you and you know, it's it's the, the the small groups of Bible study, that's an excellent way for someone who doesn't know, you know, anything to get yeah. to know people and you become familiar. But I think I think in my opinion, you know, I'm not a pastor and I can't tell a pastor how to run his church, but I think the smart thing to do would be to tie both. Yeah. Right. You know, you take yeah. the members class and while we're mentoring you and you know, you take someone like Manny who sees it Put him under Manny's wing while we're mentoring you and you're learning God's word. You're under this right. guy. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we do well, it like that. Right, and that's the trick. And the trick is, don't forget to come back and finish teaching this guy. Yeah. yeah you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't just put you to do sound and now all of a sudden you're in charge of that and I never come back to find out, hey, have you read scripture? Do you know the, the Ten Commandments? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> like the basics and, and, and the foundation of what we believe has to be taught. You know, not just the skill, because the skill factor, you can have a good game, but no spirit, and then, mm -hmm. you know, you just blew it. So, yo, every time at the end of Rap Fest Radio, we have somebody throw a freestyle, and... Uh, <laughs> wow. 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 You almost got whiplash no. on that one. For real, my back is hurting right now. <laughs> wow. Um, you got something? I, I, I remember God, yeah. one verse that I, you know, I, I do pretty much everywhere, but, um... You could, man. Why not? All right, here we go. Three as we are, here we come on a mission. Alabando a Dios. So my people come and listen. Listen up to the word that the Lord daily gives, because he gave his only son to die for our sins. He's always given me all and everything indeed. I never walked the streets of this world in need. He's always looking over my shoulder. That was it. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. be continued. Yeah. <laughs> Come to Rap Fest and, <laughs> and I'll well, finish I'm, it for you yeah. guys. All right. You just got to tap him on the show. You the guy on Rap Fest Radio? Yo, what was the rest of that rock? Yeah. Can you, you finish it, it on please? shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> you hit on shoulder. Yo, man. Again, I appreciate Eddie you guys. He wants to do nah, trust yeah. me. I'm the least <laughs> Eddie's the preacher dude. Eddie's the preacher dude. It's like one of you, uh, like a five minute power nah, sermon nah. or something. <laughs> I'm just saying, I got you, man. Yeah, but we we appreciate you guys coming out here today, of course. Uh, we're looking forward to Rap Fest and yes. see what it all turns out to be. Yes. Uh, we pray that you guys have a, a great experience and naturally Alice and I are here to make sure or at least try our best to make this one of the best ministry experiences you ever have outside of your local church. Yes. You know, uh, we want to make you guys feel comfortable and it's a lot of work. The DJing part is fun, but there's so many souls out there just, that need more than just the music. Exactly. You know, there may be a chance for you to say, I got to play a 15 minute song now because I need these 15 minutes to go talk to somebody while that record plays. Right. You know, I'd rather have silence and people ministering than a bunch of music yeah. and nobody being touched. You know, so um, exactly. I, I appreciate you guys coming out and helping out. And DJ Newman, shout out to you for, you know, yes, incorporating them and, and, and teaching them and we go mentoring them. And mentoring yeah. them. We're going to test their skills at Rap Fest and see how you've been doing. We get the Manny Report card. I'm bringing two laptops. <laughs> you got the Manny Report card. You I'm bringing like, two laptops. You know, like after the basketball game, the, the, we sit down in the chairs. Well, let's review this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to the I, listen, like, take, we're run to the street. <laughs> you see, Manny did a tunnel to stop here. <laughs> That's between you two guys. I don't want to be around for that. No, 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 man. The fact that you're part of it is good. I'm done. You know, I'm good with that. We're, we're both. It, we're, excited, we're excited. Man. We're excited. Yeah, no, we're, we're we're totally excited as well, man. So, again, August 9th, Rap Fest 2014 at Vidalia Park, East 180th Street and Daly Avenue in the Boogie Down Bronx. It's a free event. If you want, you can go to Eventbrite. You'll see the details of the event. What's good about that is it will remind you as it gets closer and it'll also put it right into your calendar for you. And it kind of gives nice. us a head count of who's coming out. That's pretty good for us to nice. know. Uh, we have a lot of people that have, you know, gone on there. That's, it was so funny. I mean, yeah, it's funny. Somebody said, oh, I can't go to the event because I get a disc, uh, a refund. I was like, it's free. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh 
my bad. I forgot. <laughs> the, you know, it was one of those things. I guess they were just so excited to come, and then they couldn't come. Like, oh, my I, God. Did, I did you a pay already? I, I, <laughs> Where? I know. What, what section were you sitting? Yeah. <laughs> what seat did you have? You paid for the good seats? Or I can put your ticket up on eBay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. So we're excited. Uh, the flyers should be coming in this week. As soon as they come in, I'll be posting all on Facebook and stuff. Make sure every church uh, ministry has. Uh, the flyers are not for the church. So I'm just for saying that. It's for the, that's why we don't give them out if early. Want, and if you want flyers to give out, show up August 2nd at yep. the Dahlia Park and, and yep. we'll give you flyers and you can give them out. Yep, you give them out August 2nd. Yeah, we're not we're not flooding churches with flyers. We don't, you know. Church, I, I will be honest, I do need one for the wall. I do need one for the wall. Just to put it on the wall. You do like the commercial? I'm posting photos on my wall. I unfriend you. <laughs> I unfriend you. <laughs> I, unfriend you. I, I think that's that great. That's great. Yeah. Classic. Yo, we are done here. Uh, Stadium Praise by K Drama. This is the shirt. Shout out to K Drama. Uh, that's what we're going to leave with the Stadium yeah, Praise man. video here on Rap Fest Radio, RapFestRadio.com. You will learn us because we're out of control. Peace. God bless. See you guys next week. No stand, stand, lifting up for them hands, hands. showing off for that brand. Had been a rep in that land. Come on. Y'all know I copy that ticket, cost more than a grand. Oh. Even ladies, they get it, and they don't dance for no bands. Ah. Like when we get in that end zone, down. think I'm crazy, I've been gone. Jesus, who would depend on going hard till I get sent home? Bah. Dealing full of that ghost, ghost. no drink in my throat. Nah. One touch of that cloak made me hold no longer, bro. That's why your boy be jumping, turtle like a big crumpet. The Lord, the prophet, threw something. In this beat, I made thumping. God comes through at the last second. Hit some buzzer beaters. Got, got, got me mad, and we rush the court from the bleachers. We do not care about odds, all we care about is our God. Go, go, going hard for my squad. He deserves all the applause. My God is a big deal. Excuse me for my zeal. It was merely head knowledge. Now it's something I can feel. I praise God like I'm in a stadium. Stadium, I praise God like I'm in a stadium. So I call it stadium. Praise. Candles. <laughs> Jehovah is the champ, champ. You ain't seen his mantle. He's the greatest of all time. time. Ne never sits on that pine. All his plays blow my mind. Make, make, make me press rewind, man. Go get a top teeny guy. More like a top meal. Blake jump over cars, Jesus. Jump it over here. Y'all don't understand what I've been through. Run a mile in my shoes. There's been a lot of close calls. Yet Christ takes care of my issues. I never been forsaken. Nah. No need for me to be faking. For my sins, I need to be baking. But all of my sins have been taken by J. Christ on that cross. cross. All my guilt has been tossed. My God's biggest boss. Undefeated, no losses. I get up out of my seat. My praise used to be weak. Didn't give 100. Yeah, I used to scream at the TV. Now I praise God like I'm in a stadium. Stadium, I praise God like I'm in a stadium So I call it Stadium Praise Stadium Praise Stadium Praise Stadium Praise I praise God like I'm in a stadium Stadium, I praise God like I'm in a stadium So I'm going crazy in the crowd While I'm reaching for the clouds Voices join these TVs loud Jesus got me going wild They say I'm doing too much they want me to turn down, turn down. But haters get turned down. turn down Your boy drama gon' clown turn up. I once was bound by everything around Now I'm found around town with the plow Cause Christ lifted up the pounds Changed my life, put me off the ground You would say the same if you were really about this life You can't remain the same when you're really born twice When I saw what he saved me from It makes me go dumb and dance like I'm in a trance Throwing up my hands until I go nuts I praise God like I'm in a stadium Stadium, I praise God like